everybody calls me Banky, that's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. You have a unique story that a lot of people don't have, right? Right. That I think that was given to you. Of course, it costs you time, very, very valuable asset. But let's say if you did not have that story and you were doing what you was doing today, would it really have that same impact? I don't think it would. I, I really don't think it would because I wouldn't have the experience that I have. I wouldn't have the knowledge that I have, you know, um, my YouTube is based upon my experience and um, the things that I went through and I tried to educate through that process mm -hmm. and let people know, you know, prison is definitely not what you see on TV, um, not what you see in the movies. Prison is real, man. And, you know, flat out is miserable and it's horrible. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, I want to get this question straight. You know how, you know, I'm, I ain't from the streets. I don't know about the right. Crips and the Bloods and all stuff like that. But you got these Crips, Bloods, GDs, Vice Lords, all these things like that. Once they get into prison, do they, does it, I, I heard that it kind of like boils down to race then. Like, it's like, hey, you know, yeah, you might be a Crip Blood, whatever, but hey, it's, you know, white, black, Latino. That's kind of what it goes. Is that true? That's in the major cities, you know, like L.A. Yeah. And, those cities like that. It's not like that in where I was at. I was in Virginia. You know, in Virginia, um, um, race really don't matter. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's not no separation of the okay, races. Okay, got there. it, okay. You know what I'm saying? For the most part, you know, black or brown dominate prisons in Virginia because that's all who really in, in there. In the prison, yeah. You understand? There's not no whole lot of, you know, white people in there. And to be honest with you, the ones that are in there, it's like a reverse from society. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, it, out here, you know, these are the most powerful people in the world that we know of, you yeah. know, the white people. In prison, it's the opposite. And it's, it's a known fact, you know what I'm saying? Because that's all that's in there. The majority, you know, in prison, uh, white people are the minority. Mm. They're not the majority. You know what I'm saying? And they know that. And, and if they don't know that, someone will <laughs> let, let, let them know that immediately. Yeah. So, you know, it's different in there, but when the gangs infiltrated um, the Virginia system, it, it it was crazy, you know what I'm saying? Because we, we it wasn't a whole lot of gangs in Virginia. It wasn't any gangs in Virginia, but they infiltrated the system now. They all over the system now. They just saturated the system. But in the same aspect, what they call the old heads mm -hmm. still, you know, hold authority in the prison. The things that they're doing now applies to the dudes that's just coming in, applies to the younger dudes, applies to the guys that's of, of their uh, generation. But you're not going to come in there with that foolishness and tell nobody who's been doing, been down 20, 30, 40 years, oh, man, you can't use this shower. You got to mm. pay us or you can't, <laughs> you can't use this phone. You got to pay us. Man, you're going to have a war up in there. Oh. You understand? And they know that and they understand that. You know, but they apply those rules to everybody else. You know what I'm saying? You could be just getting locked up and ain't never been locked up before. You've been locked up two or three years or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you try to go to the shower and you got five showers in there. And it's got a Crip shower, a blood shower, wow. a GD shower, you know, a, a Muslim shower. And, and, and that only leaves one shower for the masses of the people that ain't in no game. <laughs> And you try to go get in one of them showers, man. Them dudes are gonna tax you, man. Man, who told you to take a shower in here, man? Yeah, well, you gonna pay us fifty dollars for the next six months. Are you serious? Yeah, they serious too. <laughs> they serious too. You gonna pay me fifty dollars for taking a shower? You can pay fifty dollars, or you can go ahead and take what they gonna give you. They gonna put that Bethlehem in your, you know, send you to the What's hospital. What's the Bethlehem? That's that. That's that <laughs> holy knife, man. It's <laughs> gonna send you right where Jesus was born. <laughs> wow. Know? So, yeah, they serious about that. Same thing with the phone. You know, you got to pay to use the phone for your people who have to have money on the books. But with these games in there, you can't just go pick up a phone. It's a blood phone. It's a crypt phone. You using that phone, they coming and asking you, 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 what you doing using this phone? You you, you going to pay us? You got some money? That's, that's $50 for that phone call, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, you got dudes in there now, man. They scared to get on the phone. Especially the white guys, they can't get on the phone, they can't take a shower, they can't use the microwave, they can't do none of that without going through these gang members, you know. But 
a dude who's been locked up. What, what, if, what, if, the, what if you go tail? Like, hey, man, they... Well, if you go tail, it, you know, tail rhymes with hell. That's what you're going to catch. <laughs> <laughs> because now you not only got the gang members against you, but you got the whole penitentiary against you because now you consider the snitch. So if you snitching and if you telling, then you tell on him, you might tell on me. You know what I'm saying? So people don't want nobody around them just telling because... You, if you telling, you could tell on me. I may not be doing nothing wrong, but you know they say people, you know, will climb up a tree to tell a lie before they stand on the ground and tell the truth. Mm, so you know, okay. people don't want people around them just telling. So if you a known snitch, you know they gonna get rid of you anyway. So now you ain't got just one entity mad at you. You got everybody mad at you because don't nobody want you around them. So telling is usually out of the question. And then if you do, you know, like I say, you choosing your path and your. Uh, in your bit, in your time, time. you know, you yeah. want to go to segregation and be in a cell for 24 hours a day and don't have no contact with nobody else and do that for week in and week out, month in and month out, year in, year out, decade and decade. If you can do that, then, you know, you're superhuman anyway. You know? Okay. Now, let me ask you this question. We just saw that uh, Travis McMichael and Greg McMichael, these are the two guys that was convicted of murder down in Georgia. For the Ahmaud Aubrey case, the guy that was jogging through the neighborhood that went into a house that's under construction, they chased him down and killed him, right? So they was fighting not to go to state prison. They was fighting to go to federal prison. They just been sentenced to federal prison. You know, these are two white guys. One is like almost my age, 36 years old. Other one is like six. His dad is like 60 some years old. And they got shipped off to prison in Jackson, Georgia. How is prison life going to be for them walking into state prison? Who they, what, what, the dude that they killed was he African American? Yeah, they killed the black dude. They killed, uh, they shot the black dude three times and chased him down. And you know they wasn't arrested for a while. And you know what? What was the circumstances that they did it under? Well, a lot of people say, they, and then they got convicted of a race, uh, hate crime. Uh, they, in federal, they got convicted of a hate crime. In Georgia, they got convicted of murder. So they were just like, hey, they found all these racist texts that they were sending, that they didn't, you know, disparaging remarks about black people or whatever. And a lot of people feel like, hey, they chased him down because he was black and didn't want him in their neighborhood. And when he went to go defend himself, they killed him on camera. This is the guy that was on camera killing wow. down in Georgia. And they got convicted of like life in prison. And But they was fighting not to go to state prison. They wanted to go to federal prison. <laughs> So uh, now that they just got shipped off, so I'm thinking to myself, like, what is an old man, an old white guy who's been convicted of a hate crime, uh, killing a black man, and the son who actually shot him on camera? What's prison life going to be like for them? Well, I think um, trying to go to the state was probably the best move. I mean, trying to go to the feds was probably the best move they could possibly make, you know, under those circumstances. But I never been in the feds, but I'm quite sure um, they gonna have a, a nice, you know, welcome party waiting for them, <laughs> you know, when they get there. But I'm just, I just can equate the uh, circumstance to, to my situation and where I was. Had they come in, in the system where I was, just like I told you, prison is miserable, man. It's horrible. It's it's pure hell. Had they come in there. If there's any such thing as a double hell, that's what they was gonna be in, you know. So, um, man, you got dudes that uh literally I've known them, seen them, who who um take their own life, man, because of the pressure is so real. The the oppression, the depression, the suppression is so real, man. That a lot of people can't endure that. And then if you talking about coming in there and it, man, that's that's the that's the equivalent to you being a black man and you walk into a Ku Klux Klan's meeting. You know that's what's gonna happen to them. You know if they did that and that's public knowledge. Oh yeah, yeah, did huge, yeah, huge. yeah, and that's public knowledge, right? And it's considered a hate crime. That is the equivalent to a black man walking into a Ku Klux Klan's meeting. Um, after he just killed a white man. Wow. So you 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 can that's the first thing to come to my mind that I could even think remotely now, give you an example. Well the people in prison know? Of course. You got dudes in prison, man. Like I had a seller before. Shout out to uh 
Jerry Jenkins, man. Okay, um, shut up. Um, homeboy of mine's man, fighting for his liberation right now. Been down for 40 years since he was 20, just turned 60. Um, very intelligent dude. He to answer your question, that's what he do. He don't he has a TV that does nothing. If it ain't on CNN, mm -hmm. <laughs> news, <laughs> Or anything related to uh, economics or, or finances or news, he don't even watch. He don't watch sports. He don't watch talk shows. He don't watch movies. He don't. That's what he do, and he's he studies law, and he you know fighting his case, and he's actually got other people out on you know what I'm saying, you, uh, from studying the law and 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 getting their case back in the court with habeas corpus and stuff like that. But you have a lot of guys like that. They may not be as intellectual as him, but you got a lot of dudes in prison to just watch the news, read the newspaper. So they're going to know this, you know what I'm saying? And they're going to watch everything. And whenever mm. they post it and say, oh, well, they on their way to Greensville or they on their way to Nottaway, man, that stuff spread like wildfire. Man. And I'm telling you, it's all over. You know, that I can remember in my bit, they had a, uh, a white guy, he had, he had um, killed a, a black baby and um, had put her put her in a like a glad trash bag and threw her in the dumpster, and it was an infant, mm -hmm. and um, he was a huge huge white dude man, um, you know by about six seven six eight about three four hundred pounds, and he came to the prison that I was at, man, he he got the business, you know. Break it down. What's the business? The the business. He went out there on one of them helicopters fighting for his life. Oh, they tried to kill him. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, you know, and, and and the same thing um with anybody that I've known that I've been around that was um of another race and did something to the you know the African American race and came into prison and it was known, man, their survival rate or or, or uh, chances of not getting hurt is is probably zero. Well, what about going to protective custody? Okay, so you just said like what you said about the case that you spoke about at first. Mm -hmm. You're talking about protective custody. You're talking about a life sentence. You oh, know, yeah. you, so you're talking about doing years and decades and pro possibly infinity in a eight by ten cell with nothing but a steel bed, plastic mattress, commode, and a zinc. Mm -hmm. Your sanity will be tested each and every day. You know, we are humans. We 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 feed off of contact. We feed off of communication. We feed off of being able to, you know, you know, interact with other people. That's taken away from you when you're in isolation. Mm. That that's a mind game on you. They have since um recently, after hundreds of years possibly, uh, definitely century or, or better um, saying that holding people in segregation for 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years, that they, they have recently deemed that it unconstitutional, cruel and unusual mm. punishment. But what about the people you have already done, it. done that to and there's been no compensation for that? I, must, I myself have probably spent, in 33 years, I probably spent in, in, in uh, I probably spent over six maybe seven years in segregation. Wow. You know. What's the longest you did in segregation? Four years? Almost four years. Almost four years. Tell me about segregation. Doing four years in segregation. First of all, you, you were back there by yourself. Yeah. And you came out, what, once every, how, how often did you get a shower? Every three days. Every three days you got a shower for 15 minutes, right? Okay. Yes. And then what about a phone call? Uh, you get a phone call once a week, 15 minutes. Once a call. And the rest of the time, you just sat in a cell. That's it. You in a the cell. They're going to bring you three trays of uh, pure, unadulterated garbage a day. And um, that's it, my brother. <laughs> you, you, you have nothing else. Your mind and your will to live. That's it. What about books? You may can get a book, but it may not be the book that you want. It's going to be whatever they have that's available. Um, out of probably 30, 40 books for 80 plus people that's in segregation in a block, you may get a book if they ain't all taken. 
Um, that's going to be your only rotation of books that you have. So it, depending upon how long you stay back there, you may read them all if they all are fortunate enough to get to you. Mm. So um, that's that's it, man. That's all you got. You know, letters. You get letters if somebody writing you or whatnot. Um, yeah, man. It, 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 okay. Tim, give me a... <laughs> Okay, I'm in this room four years. I'm in this room. I wake up. What is the routine? What do you do? You go through a lot. I went through a lot of different routines. You know, you have to switch it up to, to try to maintain your sanity and your humanity because you will lose your humanity when you are being treated inhumane. You will lose your How humanity. How can you change? I mean, all I could do is sleep, wake up. No, do, you, do you get a clock? How you know what time it is? I didn't want to know what time it was. You know, I, I didn't want to know what time it was. I set my own clock in my mind. Lights, do the lights automatically come on? Do you have lights? Lights come on and lights go off at a certain amount of time. Okay, so you, time. so you, okay. But my routine, the, the way I did it was, first I got into working out, you know. Yeah. And I worked out like a maniac, but you got to understand you're not eating proper. You're not getting the proper nutrition. So you're working out, you're getting in shape, but you're losing weight. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So I went through that phase where I worked out six, eight, nine months straight. I mean, like a maniac, I'm in tip top shape, you know, but then you get bored with that because you're losing weight. You're not eating. You, you know, you're feeling strong, but you're feeling weak. So then, Hold on, what about the water? Where you get water from? You get water from out the sink. Oh, you got a little faucet there. Contaminated, okay. contaminated. They actually had a sign, man. You can't make this stuff up. They actually had a sign at the front of the prison when people come in for a visit that says, "For um, or uh, the the employees." Do not drink the water. Wow. <laughs> so the employees don't drink the do water. That's for the prisoners. Drink. That's do not drink the water. Wow. So, you know, I went through that phase of working out. You know, when that you get burnt out because, you know, it's the same thing every day. It's mundane. So I went through that phase. Then I went through the phase of reading. So I was devouring books, reading books after book after book. You know, I lay down, I work out, I wake up, I work out a little bit, you know, you know, lay down, read a book, fall asleep, wake up, finish, pick up on the chapter, go to sleep, wake up, do the same thing all day. Went through months of that phase. After that phase is gone, then you go through months of getting on the gate. You know, I'm hollering down there talking to somebody else all day. Hey, man, what you doing down there? Hey, yeah, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Then you go through the phase of the sports. Hey, man, who won the game? Denver Broncos win? Yeah, man, what the L-way do? La, 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 la. Ooh, you go through all of that, you know, and then all of that gets born, you know? So then you start the whole routine over again. You go back to working out, you know? And, and after you be back there for so long, see, like me, like three, three, three almost four years, it's like, that's infinity, you know. And then I had administration telling me, "Oh, you ain't getting out at all. You gonna stay back here for your whole bit." My, oh, so so my your bit mind was infinity. So they didn't even, they didn't even tell you like, "Hey, you're only gonna be back here for four months, oh, no, uh, four years." You just like, "Hey, you no. this is the rest of your life done." Yeah, they don't tell you that. They tell you what they want you to know, you know. And they was telling me I won't get out at all. So, so in my mind, I'm thinking I ain't gonna never get out. Yeah, that's a strong will to live there because I'd have been like, "All right, well, life is over for me. I'm done." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if so you you're back there and how do you keep you know your sanity like you they give you one book you like you said you're yelling you're working out what's your will to live somebody telling you like hey this ain't it this, you, you're never getting out of here for me it was like you know only thing i really had to really grasp and hold on to was you know like my mom my family my kids my grandkids i'm like Man, you know what I'm saying? I done been this far, man. You know, they waiting on me. They been supporting me. You know, how would they feel if I just died? Or how would they feel if I you know, mm. took my own life? All that stuff across your mind. Anybody who tell you they, they don't, they, they lying. You know, I done been homicidal. I done been suicidal. Mm. You understand know <laughs> me? I, I done been on both spectrum. So it, that's the other phase that I didn't mention. I went through the phase. Then when you get to the phase where you like, you done did this, you done did that, you done did this. Then you turn around, you do it over and over and over again. And then you're still not gone. So then you go to the rebellion stage. So I done been through that. Mm. Well, I'm, I want to fight now. I, I want y'all to kill me or I want to kill one of y'all. Mm. Come on with it. So I set fires in the cell. I flood the cell. I tear the cell up and they come in there 10, 15 deep with it. 
electric shields or they bring the Rockwellers in there and let them go on you and you got to fight them and then they beat you up and chain you down buck naked to the bed for 72 hours and come in there and let one arm out and let you eat out of a bag lunch and wow yeah and then get you up and you know take you and let you use the toilet and defecate or urinate when it's about 12 of them in there standing around you waiting for you to you know buck cause you naked and they fully armed up like Ninja Turtles. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So you, I, I'd have been through all of that. You know what I'm saying? But, excuse me, but when you're in that mode, you know, you come to that in your mind like, man, come on with it. You know what I'm saying? Can't be worse than what I'm going through. Come mm -hmm. on with it. You know, and then sometimes, man, that's what I meant by your humanity. You have to you have to maintain your humanity to understand that you're human because they're treating you inhumane. So to to maintain your humanity, sometimes you got to feel physical pain to make you know you're alive. Wow. wow. You know, so to, to, to rumble with them 10, 12, 15 deep, knowing that, you know, you can't win, but... You gonna take them knocks and bumps and bruises because you when you land there and they're healing up, you like, yeah, I'm still brief. Mm. <laughs> you ain't killed me. I got to be alive. I got to be a human being. And regardless of how you treat me or how you look at me or how you perceive me, I'm human because I'm I'm laying right here now in pain. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? I'm in pain. You know, so it's crazy, man. But these are the mindsets that you go through when you're going through the things you have to go through. Like I say. It, it it ain't it ain't it ain't meant for nobody. I don't, personally, I don't think prison is meant for human beings. Yeah. I just really don't. You know, I always feel like I feel like it's a better way. I feel like you ain't helping nobody incarcerating them. The things that they say are correctional officer that's incorrect. They ain't correcting nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, correctional center incorrect. They ain't correcting nothing. You don't go to prison and come out a better person unless you want to. Mm. Period. Cause I learned more about other things in crime and prison that I wouldn't have even thought about, knew about, even dreamed about. Mm. So it ain't that they corrected me, I corrected me. Because I realized this ain't the life for me. This ain't the life I wanna live. Okay. I gotta ask you this. <coughs> when it comes down to, let's get on the financial side. You say, hey, my ultimate goal was to have a gym someday, right? You know, I wanna have a, a boxing gym for kids, things like that, right? You walk out of prison with a thousand dollars. What direction or way, you know, you, you hey, I came out with a thousand dollars two years ago. I want to have a prison, not a prison, but a, uh, just got a prison. But you want to have a gym for kids boxing. Do you have a roadmap to get there? Yeah, I had a roadmap to get there. Um, my roadmap was to start working as soon as possible, get in somebody's barbershop. You know, if I could do some side work, do some side work. You know, um, everything that people was giving me when I came out, you know, I had a lot of blessings, man. A lot of people who loved me, missed me, and you know, you know, gave me things. I mean, I was I was putting my ass to the side. You know what I'm saying? I was putting my ass to the side. One thing I can say I definitely learned how to do while I was in prison was to budget. You have to learn how to budget in prison. If you don't budget in prison, you will eventually be in a situation. You know <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you're going to not have what you need by the time you go back to the store. Then you're going to go borrow from the store box, man, which I eventually became the store box. Man. But you're going to go borrow from the store box, man. Nine times out of ten or ten times out of ten, the store box, man, is running with an iron fist. Mm. Everything is 100% interest. Wow. Yeah, if you get two, you owe me four. If you get six, you owe me 12, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. That's 100% interest. If you don't have it, you got to pay it back in blood. Wow. So you don't want to get in those type of situations, so you're going to learn how to budget. But yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're going to make this last from here. You're going to have to go from 30 days here. You So I learned how to budget. You know, so I knew how to budget. I knew how to stay within my means of what I needed and make what I had stretch. So I had that coming out of prison. So like I said, my $1,000 I had, 
I took upon all the, the you know, the welcome homes, huh? Here you go, here you go. Yeah. Ooh, I put all my eyes to the, the side. side. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And then people want to take you out to eat. They want to do this and they want to buy everything. I'm, like, right, sure. you know, I'm good with it. You know, oh, you need this, you need that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And I keep my eyes to the side. So, you know, I was building up a little, you know, a little surplus. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, when I start working, then I add on to this, I add on to that. But then, you know, those things dry out. You yeah. know, everybody ain't gonna give you something forever. Yeah, you yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, I start dipping in it, dipping in it, you mm -hmm. know, and I'm, I'm doing this because daily day stuff, taking care of myself. So, you, you, I'm, I'm waiting to cut hair and I'm starting to cut hair. I'm cutting people hair on my own. I ain't in nobody's shop or nothing yet, but I'm cutting hair on my own. And then, like I say, you could have a plan, but your plan will be superseded by God's plan. Yeah, that's true. You understand? Special. Yeah, pure delicious. Pure delicious. Man. My name is uh, Banky, man. Everybody calls me Banky. That's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years. Yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality. You know, and uh, I'm rich in love. My family love me, and that really, that's that's really the, all that counts.